All right. Rick and Brett back for another snackable. Snackable. Snack, snack. We just had lunch, so I'm not very hungry. We had tin, tin and taco. Oh, that's my favorite. This man. is the tin and taco. Look at this. Does that look good? Yes, yeah. it does. It, it, was, it, was, it was good. It was yeah. Brett's. And yeah. mine is half eaten, or else I would have taken a picture of that <laughs> also already. So, yeah, another episode of the Snackable, man. Yep. So, this one that we're creating is uh, there's a lot of new people that have maybe never bought a note on the fence, want, want to invest in notes, trying to look at you know, different notes maybe on the platform, but still maybe a little hesitant. Um, for those people that have never bought a note but need to want to jump over the fence, can you provide them with some information that uh, would be useful for them to actually take the leap? For a snackable. For a snackable. Yes, man. We're going to pop this thing in the microwave. No problem. So, um, okay. First thing, we're, you're going to buy your first note. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you already have your capital lined up and that we're not trying to find capital. That's a good idea. Because if I'm assuming you've already got, you know how you're going to pay for it. You've established sort of how much money you have and you know your budget on what you're shopping for. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is you want to know <clears throat> like what kind of asset are you trying to buy? Are you trying to buy a cash flowing performing loan or are you trying to buy a non-performer that you want to fix up and you know take back as a real estate or you want to fix the loan, turn around and resell it? So, And that's going to be defined by your capital restraints, right? If you want something that's performing, you know, you probably can just put most of your capital towards it, maybe leave some reserves aside, but have the capital there. If it's if you're trying to buy something that's non-performing, you better have a substantial amount of reserves, especially if you plan on foreclosing, because that can take lots of time and lots of money. Sure. So we know that find the asset, um, the type of asset. The next thing you want to do is you want to find out like what state, what geographical location do I want to focus on? Um, if it's your first note, let's stack the deck in your favor, right? You know, I buy nationwide now, but when I started buying notes, I bought in my backyard. I bought on a street that I knew of because I was very familiar with the real estate. Mm -hmm. I knew that I could buy something on that street. Um, I knew what the prices were, so I knew that I was getting a good deal on the debt, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you want to Stack the deck in your favor. If it's not in your hometown, maybe it's in a, a town where you have a relative, somebody that can help you out. Somewhere there's boots on the ground, something that's going to minimize you having to manage everything from afar. Yeah. Definitely, I think, stacking the deck in your favor. It's it's the the kind of the tricky thing is, is once you start buying in your own your own backyard, it's like you're starting with a bad habit, but it's still, I think, a, it's just an okay thing. Why is it a bad habit? Because the... The great thing about notes is, is oh, it it you're not confined to a geographical area. That's the great thing about notes. Yeah. And when we started, we started just buying in Orlando. Mm -hmm. Just in Orlando, 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 Orlando. Then oh, we went how to, quickly did that run out? <clears throat> um, that changed within like seven or eight months. Really? Yeah, because then you started looking, wow. You know, you started venturing out. Well, it's it wasn't necessarily a, a 15, 20 minute drive from where we were. I went 30 minutes and then I went 45 minutes and then I went, you know, an hour and a half and then. Well, I mean, also too, what if someone lives in an area that's maybe very rural or also very prices are expensive, they probably can't shop in their backyard. Which is why you want to stack the deck with as much as, as much as you can help yourself out. You don't have to buy in your area. You might live in New York and you're like, look, I don't want to spend that much money on buying notes in New York. Yeah. Great. Find an area where you're going to have boots on the ground, where you have some sort of network set to help you. That makes sense. They're just You're stacking the deck in your favor, giving you the better chance of success. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to find the asset, right? So we know what kind of asset. We know where it is. Now let's start finding as many of them as we can to look at and get an idea of, okay, this is what's out there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like... You don't want to buy the first one, but you don't want to look at a thousand of them. Yeah. So eventually, you got to pull the trigger. Um, you know, under and, and maybe you do buy the first one. I bought the first one that I well, it was a second one, but the first one was kind of not even the same ballpark. I bought the first one I really had a chance to buy, um, and pull the trigger on it. So go ahead and just look at a couple of assets, open up lines of communication, 
uh, with the sellers and figure figure it out a little bit and look and kind of do a little comparing and contrasting and just get an idea of what you want to buy. Um, <clears throat> from there, once you identify your asset, submit an offer and start the negotiation process. You're going to submit what's called an indicative bid. So an indicative bid. And you know what? An indicative bid, this is probably a whole nother snackable we'll do, but an indicative bid, that was one of the ones that I forgot. Okay, I'll write that I'll, down. Indicative bid. So what's an indicative bid? Basically, an indicative bid is you're going to make a bid assuming that everything on title and value check out. Yep. If it's performing, assuming the pay history checks out. So you're, you know, it's nice if you can go look at the, look at the title and everything like that, but sometimes it's not there. So you just want to submit, okay, if everything checks out, this is the price that I'm comfortable with. That's what you submit. Once you do that and they agree on it, that's when you start ordering your due diligence documents. And if it's your first time through, well, if it's your hundredth time through, I recommend triple checking the DD. Like, right? If you're doing the running through the collateral file yourself, don't just run through it one time and be like, oh, it's good. Run through it a couple times. Study it. Get comfortable with it. It's not bad practice. It'll help you out in the long run. That's a good tip. Yeah. So sometimes people get to, they're so focused on the results and not the process. Focus mm -hmm. on the process, the process of running your due diligence. You'll learn so much more about not just the note, but about potential exit strategies. Things will pop into your head. Um, well, what if I did this? I mean, that's how some of the, the best exits I've had came from continually looking through the, the due diligence documents. Really? Yeah, it happened. There's one the other day. I was rereading the contract we had and it was on his, it was a land contract and article seven in the land contracts. Like if the borrower makes none of, if the borrower misses any of the payments, this contract is null and void. Right. And so wow. it's it like, this is one where the borrower has been late. They haven't made payments for like five or six months. And I'm like, I just want to take this house back. How can I do it? Because the property is worth like, like there it's a community redevelopment district, right? So we're in, you know, the pro the debts maybe seventy on it, but now it's so it's such legacy in our portfolio because the borrower was paying and now they've stopped. Um, that it's one of those areas where there are a bunch of brownstones mm -hmm. in St. Louis and they're buying them up and they're reselling them for like two seventy five, three hundred. And it's like, you know, well, we're into it for, <laughs> for 45. Oh, man. Wow. And so you're like, wow, sure would like to take that one back. How can I do that? And I started reading through the contracts. I'm like, oh, I can do that. So we have the attorneys looking on that one. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, you can. So, um, yeah, just make sure you triple your due diligence. Go through it. So, you know, that's kind of it. Oh, one other thing that I didn't insert in here that needs to be, that probably goes in right when you start negotiating with the seller, line up a servicer. Just do it. Get a professional servicer. You want to do that. Um, if it's non-performing, you're also going to want to line up um, force place insurance if your servicing company doesn't handle that for you. Just to note, those a lot of servicers <clears throat> won't actually take you on until you actually have no. Right. But mm -hmm. you can call them up and say, hey, I'm buying this loan. I need to set up a servicing thing mm -hmm. or a servicing contract with you. Mm -hmm. And, and get they, the ball rolling. And they'll get the ball rolling. So that way, once you buy the loan, then you can onboard yeah. it. And it's good. A lot you're not, yeah, you're not delaying um, as much. So, you know, that's it. We'll run through it real quick. You've already got your capital, so I don't need to talk to you about that. Um, you have to know what kind of asset you want to buy, performing, non-performing. Know where you want to buy it. Let's stack the deck. Buy it in states that... You've got some help. Um, this what else? Us. Make an offer. Start negotiations. Mm -hmm. Set up your servicing and your force-placed insurance. Uh, run your due diligence and triple check it. Like, just run through it. Read it over and over and over and over again. Make that a, a support article, man. That's, that's, that's a little checklist right there. I like that. Yep. So that's it. Buying your first note. Cool. All right. Then uh, if you have one uh, request for yourself that you want to hear us uh, cover... Please, let yeah, us know. Yeah, please let us know in the comments. And uh, thanks. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. So, all right, we'll see you in the next one.